Uh, let's try refreshing this. And hopefully this works once it loads. Let's have a learning time. I don't want people to have. Ah, it's not. Why is it not doing that? Ah. Oh my God. There we go. Down mix to mono. Let's try that. It's good. It's on stereo. I just need to change it to mono. I'm not sure what I just changed it. So I changed the setting to mono, but it didn't do it. But hopefully that's done it. Let me just re-listen. Test, test, test. Hello, hello, hello. Let's try that. It's good. It's on stereo. I just need to change it to mono. I'm not sure what I just changed it. So, so I changed the set. There we go. Okay, you guys, um, there is a big delay on this, so I do apologize as well. I've just listened in, it is like quite a delay. But there we go. So, um, hopefully, everyone had a good new year. Sorry about that on that catch up. And I'm going to hopefully go through We've got an hour here. Um, so, I'm going to try and be quick. I've got a couple of uh, you know, a couple of pages worth of stuff to go through and so basically what we're going to do is similar to what we did with the defensive seminar so in the defensive seminar people may be aware of that that we sort of covered three of the main weapons that you should be using in my opinion uh, and others in defense so we looked at things like shadowing on the inside the funneling how to blanket how to do triangle defense and that was really good because a lot of people took that some people actually joined the main seminar we did main seminar after and had big success and it's really cool to see people use that because in the higher ranks people are more willing to shadow and that's probably one of the biggest differences between the lower ranks and the higher ranks is actually that willingness to shadow and willingness to play two moves as opposed to one which we're going to get on in this seminar which is offense of course so yeah, this is aimed for people who struggle on offense, don't really have good conversion rate, don't really know what they should be doing in certain situations. And when I say certain situations, guys, I'm not going to give you a random situation that occurs once every 20 games. Um, through looking at the data, through looking at videos and coaching, we can see the same patterns over and over and over. And so these common patterns, we want to break them quite quickly. And we don't want to really mess around because the quicker you can break them, and the quicker you focus your energy on them, over time you're going to get better and better and better. And, you know, people talk about speed. They go, oh, you've got to be fast. You don't have to be fast at moving, but to really get up the ranks, you have to be very fast at execution. And you're going to see why in a bit. We're going to talk about that in a bit. And yeah, so a lot of people, and this probably uh, will be you, you know, have struggles with, you know, ball chasers. Ball chasers are the issue. How you doing, Vaz? What's up, by the way? What's up, Cat, Cat, Cactus King? Hey, what's up, Seb? How you doing, man? Having again. All good now. Good to hear that. Metalix, do appreciate you guys being here. So you've probably had it. You've got a situation. You think, well, I've got all these great moves. I've been practicing all this stuff, but it doesn't work. This move doesn't work. Why? Well, they just ball chase, and I don't know what to do, and I always get dunked. And we're going to cover that today. So it's going to be how do we really, realistically, the big question on everyone's mind is how do you be a ball chaser? And in the defensive seminar, we touched on the elements in defense, not to be too quick to get out, you know, just hold back a bit, then work to get out. But we're going to actually talk about, well, what do we do? How do we get out? Today, what's up? How you doing? How's it going, Mike? What's up, precepts? James, good to see you. Schaefer, how you doing, man? Hope you guys are having a good day and had a good New Year's. So realistically, and this isn't to sound crazy, what I'm about to say here, you should be scoring at will with solid offense. You really should. And the reason for that, <laughs> and I, it always goes back to it, you know, you can't mention offense without mentioning defense, is because defense is very low at the moment in the game. And I know obviously they've changed the ranks, but still, even in these ranks where champ two is now grand champ of two seasons ago, the defense is extremely poor. So we need to be taking advantage of that. We need to be converting extremely quick. And we should be looking at finish rates of, I believe, 70% uh, when we get onto our offense. So especially off a counter, you want to be looking at a 70% finish rate. I've seen people do this well. I've seen people do this right. And when you get it right, you're scoring five goals in two, three minutes. And they usually just forfeit. 
Um, so I, I know a few people in the chat that can actually vouch for me on this one who've managed to get this to work, who've seen this in action. And when you see it in person, it's really weird. It's just like goal after goal after goal. Um, so that's what we're going to be looking at. So yeah, we're looking to score uh, below GC3 SSL on most attempts. Obviously, um, just a little shout out here. We've got a bigger one coming up of this seminar four hours like we do with the offensive one on Sunday the 21st at the same time. So Sunday at the same time. Well, um, four till eight. Four hours with me, my, uh, me, myself, Precepts, and Raid. And yeah, we're capping at 30 places as well. So let's actually get into the meat and potatoes of this. And we're going to start with the most common way people score. And that is pressure plays. So the, the best way to score, and one of the most common ways to score, we're jumping to free play here, is by pressure. All right? If you talk to anyone, they'll just keep spamming corner dives, spamming corner dives, and you just keep pressuring, pressuring, pressuring. Now, how many times have you been pressuring someone, you've got a really good thing going, and you do this, and the next thing they score? How many times has that happened to you? So, the reason pressure can make or break a game is dependent on your execution, and it actually comes down to your weapons, and how many weapons you're willing to use in that situation. And truth be told, less is more with this one. And so, we're gonna, we're gonna go on to this a little bit more in a second. So, when we're talking pressure, we're looking to you know throw things high, keep high pressure while we grab boosts, and we just keep circling around, keep attacking. If uh, the ball comes the same way, so let's say we're here and we just flick it onto the back, well, it doesn't have to be good, that'll do. If we grab this boost, we can actually just turn on and again go for something high to lift it, to push it over to this side. Maybe fake something to make them defend, we go to this side. And slowly but surely, you're just gonna wear them out and you will get an opening, you will get a jab. Uh, <laughs> precepts raid myself we're doing a free season as you know at the, no uh, at the moment and we have gotten to i think diamond two without actually using any boost so just because we've been jabbing an instant flicking with zero boost zero boost we've managed to get to diamond so if you're struggling to get to diamond hopefully those upcoming episodes will help you out So, yeah, the way this works is we force a question of the defender. And you're going to hear me say this a lot in this hour, is forcing a question out of the defender. So, do you want to defend or do you want to risk grabbing a boost? And this is obviously stuff we covered in the defensive seminar. We want to shell in defense. And I'm going to get to offense, don't worry. So, if you're in defense, you want one sort of defended and you want one covering the defender. Okay, covering the first man, the second man, then if they make a play, you can move out onto it, hopefully dependent. Now, what actually really happens in Rocket League, unfortunately, is that boost may be there, may not. You're on zero boost. You'll go, yeah, forget the ball. I'm going to grab this and that's a goal. And I know this happens all the time. And that's why pressure works so well. Pressure works well because defense doesn't work well at the moment. So you are asking a question. Are you going to defend my jab or are you going to grab the boost? All right, yeah. The people's champs. Yeah, let's go, precepts. The people's champ. Um, so the skill with this, as we just cover pressure plays real quick, is to keep making sure you are using height. I cannot stress this enough. If you take nothing, if you're gonna write a note, hit the ball high. It doesn't need to be hard, just hit the ball high. We're gonna go on to the, the moves in a minute. And then we've got counters, okay? So counters are I like to start with a counter and that leads into a pressure play. So for example, we've got a defensive shell, we've got one deep in there, we've got one as first man. Their first man will overcommit. They always do, especially in champ two, champ three, if you're struggling to rank up in those ranks, this works so easily. And then what you're gonna do is you are going to counter. You're gonna start putting pressure directly on the opponent as fast as possible. And ideally with something high like that at the end, that'll be a goal. And um, we call it, you know, the sort of pacifist system where you're just going to shoot this second man. You're just going to start this offense and you're off. And the trick with a counter is to go. Just go. It doesn't have to be skillful. It doesn't have to be quality. We're going to talk about the moves in a minute. But you just need to go. All right. So many times I see people trying to implement the stuff we're doing here. And they'll do their play so well. They do the inside shadowing that they learn from the, and it's so good. And they've got their defensive shell. They've got their pacifist positions. They get the counter. Okay, the person's just overcome it, and then they take their time and they're like, right, so here we go. Let's just, and then they just get demoed. You don't have time, and you want to catch them off guard. You want to build different rhythm into your game organically, so that when we counter, we count fast. So that's a, that's one rhythm. Okay, where rhythm is like a half beat. Boom, we're off. 
okay? And then when we're playing against the defense, when we're pressuring, we can lower the rhythm down and think more of a methodical breaking down of the players. And we're gonna do a live demonstration right here in a minute once I explain all of this. So yeah, you just need to go. Even if like, so say the player's there, they've just overcommit and you just hit that ball there, that's fine. Because now you can have momentum, even with low boost, to turn this, you could grab that. And now you can just go, and then you can go for one of your weapons straight away. It just has to get pressure. You have to get pressure. Why is that? Hopefully I can do this uh, if I just back off. The reason is because we want to pin people. Actually, I'm going to have to go into a replay to show you this. So, when you're looking at Rocket League in general, I'll just jump into any replay here, it doesn't really matter. And uh, we're doing Q&A at the end, guys. So if you have any questions from any of this, okay, just do let me know at the end and we'll try and cover it. Okay, so when we're talking about twos uh, in specific, but it doesn't really matter because I just need to see the map. What you want to do is you've got this guy over committing, okay? You have this opponent, they're in the corner. You're now attacking you and your teammate, your first man, your second man's here, and you're attacking this one player. You have to force this player into the middle. That's your goal. And that's why we need something quick, something hard, and something high. If it's not high, you're just gonna hit it to them. And even if they're in the middle, they can then take control and off they go. But the reason we wanna go down the middle is because most players will be here, okay? They will follow up on the same side. If you go down the middle, you're usually gonna to score, to be honest with you, straight away. But if not, you're gonna force this player off here in champ two, in champ three, in fact, anything underground champ, free probably in all honesty the boost management isn't very good so players want this they want to go wide so you'll actually see players who are here well actually they just dive into the corner most of the time but they'll ever circle out and they always circle out back how many times you've seen this they'll be here and you start the offense and they will circle wide which is why you just crack a shot it's a goal it's a lost skill and i've actually got a drill for this which i'm going to show you which might tilt some people actually it's a weird drill but that's what you want to do you funnel this person off this boost and you force them to defend they come back to defend and as soon as they do you chase that ball down ball is a weapon you must have heard this before all right and there's a reason for it so we're going to go into this yeah, so you don't, that's, that. so I want to show you the moves. I'm going to show you the moves, Rob, uh, to stop that happening because that is one of the most common issues with people is they pass it and get scored on, all right? So when you, when you get rid of this ball, all right, so I've got rid of this ball and now they either go up, so let's say he goes up to defend that, but remember, his teammate's in my back corner and my teammate's following behind me, but not too close. So if he hits it over my head, let's say it goes over my head like this, doesn't matter. I'm just going to go to this boost here. I'm going to take a big quality resource. These are level three boosts. The opponent's boost are level three because they're so valuable. And my teammate will be the person who picks up this pass. So what essentially has happened is we've isolated that player. They're over there in the corner. We attack first high, which forces one of two things. They either go high and defend it, which means they're going to tap it to my teammate, who's just going to have an open net to finish with. All right. Or they will try and stay grounded and try and take control of this, but I'm charging them down. So this is why I tell you guys, you know, when you're on counters, you have to go. So if you're here, right, you get this counter, you don't just go, all right, that's pretty cool. I'm going to go, 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 kill them. Okay, try and kill them because you're going to force them off the ground to make a bad save. If they stay grounded, it's an open net because you just, you've took them out. All right. So that is what you want to do on your counters. Um, and one of the reasons counters work so well in this game is because people just dive and they flip into everything. They just flip. Everyone just flips into things. You can get, and I've done it on one of my old series, and I really believe I could do it again. You can get to champ two without ever dodging. And I'm, I'm pretty confident I've, maybe I could do a challenge video for you guys, but you can get to champ two without ever needing to dodge with boost if you just play the right moves. A lot of people lose because they dodge. It's the dodge that's killing you. All right. Um, so that's the, the second one. So just to recap that, we've got pressure plays where we keep we are breaking them down, breaking them down. Then we have counter plays. We let them overcommit. Then we get going extremely fast. Then we break them down. The counter usually, if it's defended well, will lead to a pressure play. All right. And then the last one you've got is insta goals, instant goals. 
So this is like, it can just happen anywhere, you know, maybe the ball just pops up, whatever, just randomly after a kickoff. And you can just come in and you can just take a shot and maybe it's open and that's an insta goal. Or just weird things happen in this game. Maybe you just get a free thing, you just go for a pinch or, you know, how many times has this happened? You save the ball like here, you probably see pros do this and it goes straight on it. You just get insta goals, right? We're not going to really cover that because there's not as much structure out of that. And like I say again, you know, from the data we're looking at, what happens a lot, what occurs a lot, and therefore how we can score off the back of that. Okay, let me just make sure I haven't missed anything. Oh yeah, so okay, so each method has its own weapon, and obviously in the main seminar, because there's so much to cover on offense, you, you guys remember the, the masterclass system, okay? The masterclass system, we've got it on this channel, it's completely free, you can follow it along, you can do your belts. That system is still like viable today, it still works today, nothing's really changed. Uh, too much except the free moves I'm about to show you aren't mentioned in that series um, I still recommend it and you know recently I think a couple of weeks ago we actually had 150 people on the pink belt so really uh, you know amazing chuffed with that so thank you everyone who's given that a blast do appreciate it and uh, yeah it's still worth doing but the free moves here haven't been mentioned there So let's see. So yeah, these next three things I would say make about 95% of my offense up. Why should you listen to me? Um, because I have scored a lot of goals in this game. I yeah, really have scored a lot of goals. Uh, at one point I was like top 600 for total goals scored. I don't know how many goals I've scored. Um, on my main account, something like 60 odd thousand goals. So a lot of goals and actually quite a, well, very high for that amount of goals, a really high conversion rate on the goals. So the way we do it is actually really simple and we're going to break into it. So the first move, and I promise you, if you're under Grand Champ, this will really improve your game. You're probably going to be like, what the hell? It's not this simple. It is this simple. It is just to jab the ball. The jab works in everything. So like we said earlier, if I'm pressuring, I just jab the ball. That's perfect. You think, well, you didn't score. I didn't want to score. I want to put it high. I want to put the ball high. I don't need to score yet. All right. If I'm on a counter, all right, maybe the ball's off some sort of counter. That's actually a terrible setup for a counter. Uh, let's get it bouncing. Okay, we hit this ball on the bounce. No, we don't. That'll do. Okay, what we could do, if we're not too great, we can just single jump there. That's a jab. That's fine. And then you can just jab again. And you just keep jabbing. And you can use your single jumps in your jabs if you want to, um, to lift the ball. So if it's sort of going away from you here and you're going to sort of slide under like I did a minute ago. Okay, what I would really do there is I would jump because this gives you a... A more definitive hitbox you're sort of definitely going to hit it because you can go high and hit it and you can actually miss time it low so if i miss time it low i can still hit it okay and i've got a much bigger window to get a good quality jab so when i'm breaking players down if i'm looking on offense especially in the system we talk about jabbing all the time so we want to do this all the time put that ball high and you'll be surprised at how easy this makes the game i've took players in, in champ three and I've said, just jab the ball more, jab the ball. They're really, I said, go in and you just jab it. And it's almost hilarious to watch because like, this can't be this simple. Um, and it is. When do we learn about flip resets? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm going to tell you something in a second, actually. So if you talk about jabbing, it's a good question, Seb. Um, when you look at, you know, it's become more and more of a thing now, which is great. If you look at Nas, Moxie, Okadid, Zen, apparently Jack, they use so many jabs in their offense now. You really look for it. And if I could go back again and be, you know, a, a goal player, I would just focus on driving around, becoming very good at driving around and figuring out how can I move into this ball to get it to jab like that. Because the jab sets up everything at the high level. Go watch Monkey Moon. Monkey Moon's brilliant at this, so the ball will come to him. Monkey Moon will jab this and Zen as well, actually. And he's up and first killer and, he, and he's air dribbling it. And it comes from the jab. Everything comes from that jab. All right. That would be cool to see a 60% uh, shot percent the last 60 days. That would be really cool, actually. I don't know how to do that, but that would be cool. So why is the jab so effective? Because it achieves the number one key for offensive success. Write this one down. The number one key for offensive success is height. I've looked at the data. I've got, done this for a long time, and I can tell you, that power is great. It is, and the element of surprise is brilliant too. Rhythm breaks are brilliant. We're going to talk about rhythm breaks in a bit. But nothing has as much success as a height change. By far, any sort of height change, and like I say, specifically I'm talking GC3 and under right now, 
any kind of height change is absolutely it just destroys players and the reason why is most players don't defend properly they will be told never go to net we've heard it a million times which means if i jab this ball onto your backboard you can't see anything and it's a goal that's why i wait here now i can see you come in and i can go and defend it and i may not need to defend it but i can see you and really first man should also how do you pop it should also be matching the height of the ball on the wall so they can come off and save you okay but people don't defend on the backboard either another reason why jabs are so effective so height 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 write that one down get height on your offense and again like i say you could just use jabs and easily get into diamond now um especially in twos you could you could probably solo queue it in twos with just jabs in the past, you could do it easily into to champ two as well. And so this is why I get confused. And Seb, you made me laugh there with that. <laughs> uh, you know, people say, I'm diamond. You know, what's wrong with my air dribble? What's wrong with my flip reset? What's wrong with my musty? If you want to do that, good for you. But if you want to win, learn to jab the ball. Because the reason is, I see so many people, they're going to go, right, I'm doing, I don't know, say Waiton's latest pack. And it, look at this perfect air dribble. Okay, great. Can you get that in the game? No. Well, I know you can't because I've looked at the data. It's not It's not there. You don't see that very commonly in that game, okay? You don't see it perfectly roll up the wall with the boost and everything and perfect. It very rarely happens. So why are we spending 100 hours on that? If you enjoy it, good for you. But do you want to win? That's all I'm asking people. If you want to win, stop wasting your time and just learn to jab it. Because that, <laughs> these situations happen all the time where the ball will be hit back to you because a player will just flip like that. They'll just flip like that. And all you've got to do is learn positioning, again, defensive seminar, and boom. Oh, well, now they're screwed. It's over. And we're going to, like I said, we're going to jump in the live game and prove that in a bit. Um, so hopefully that is the makes sense for the jab. And if you are on a counter, I would... So if you're pressuring, the jab allows you to keep the ball in the air. And you can actually... Um, this this evolves, so <laughs> like a Pokemon. If I want to do a, like a real good play, I can keep back flipping. So say I've got pressure on my opponent. Let's go back over here. And we've started jabbing them for whatever... You know, we, we've started jabbing them. We've done well on these jabs. I will, I will start back flipping. Because what this does is it forces me never to rotate. And this is a big issue I have with players. Like, uh, when you're learning this, yeah, do this and just go off and grab this pad. But imagine this, right? I don't even need to rotate anymore. So I'm hitting this ball onto their backboard and I'm just backflipping. Maybe not uh, <laughs> with that. But you, hopefully you saw it a second ago. You need a real... It, it helps to have a good jab to start this. But So you hit it, you jab it, and then you're here. And now what can happen is you're just basically just peppering this on the backboard. You're constantly messing them up. And it really, really froze them with this. It's easy to show you in game. I'll show you in game a little bit easier. But yeah, so learning how to do backflips like this and keep your positioning is, is vital in front of the net because you can hold, like you can just keep holding the offense here. You can see how powerful this move is. You can pop it up and it really messes people up and you can really practice that. And this can become a counter. It can be a power shot. So if you want to do a power shot, you know you're going for, say, a hook shot here. You can just swing into it, and that's got a lot of power on it. So one of the, my favorite shots is a backflip shot. If you get the right angle, it's just so good because you can hold your position, and you don't have to, like, fly off. But obviously, I'm, I'm botching this up. Um, don't want to make excuses, but a bit of dumbs in the old uh, forearms guys been doing the, uh, you know, new year, new me working out all the time. So that's how I would do it if I had pressure and if I had counters. So remember, we've got pressure and counters. If I had a counter, I would then just flip into that jab. So if I'm here and I'm learning to jab, that jab now becomes a front flip. And I'm going to show you the drill I use to get really powerful shots, um, which make a big difference. So you literally just come and you just front flip. Over time, that front flip will become a speed flip. So you'll sort of come in and hit it like that. And now that we're under the ball, I'd go for a kill. But if you didn't want to kill them, let's say you just don't want to kill them. You, you do this, uh, this speed flip. Okay, you don't want to kill them. You can just go up and then just try and like tap it into the top corner. Just be awkward, edge of a bump. It's a two on one. It doesn't matter. You've just got to get going. Don't waste time. That's the first move. Um, let me know again if you've got any questions on that. And I'm trying to, uh, yeah, try the backflip technique. You could, there, there are actually some good packs that swing this across and you want to backflip. I've increased mechanics has been uh, countered by instant challenges. Increasing my mechanics, okay, which is why jabs and staying grounded is so effective. Yes, uh, actually, one more thing about jabs, because people might ask this. What if I'm about to get dunked and I do that and it goes into the goal? This is where you need to learn ang angular jabbing. So say I'm here and I'm about to get dunked, just jab it like this. 
And that way, if they do clip it, it just goes into your corner and it'll, because of the way the jab is, it'll actually be quite volatile. So you jab it like that and it'll bounce here. And now you've took them out of the game and you've still got your free ball. And again, you can just keep popping this ball and just play it around the opponent. Um, hopefully that makes sense. On the first one, I know you're probably thinking, God, I wanted something a bit more substantial than that. I'm sorry to break it to you, but this is probably the best move in the game. As, as stupid as that sounds, on offense, statistically, statistically, this is the highest finishing rate move in the game. From And I've watched, again, thousands of replays, I don't want to bang on about that all the time, but from pro level I'm talking, you go watch pros. Just go watch a pro 1v1 right now. See how many times they jab that ball because that jab goes into an air dribble flip reset and all that good stuff, okay? That is the number one offensive skill in the game. That's without, without anything else. You could have... Uh, power shots you could have the world you know but the jab is what sets everything up and is the highest skill in the game now it's the it's the number one it's the and it's the most fundamental thing and it just comes down to driving skill how you doing don what's up by the way how you doing brother so yeah work on them and work on adding the backflip how do you do the backflip shot i'll just quickly show you it's actually a little bit of a myth so what people think is they say well you know the backflip shot it gives it a little bit of a different air i want to show you something so this ball's rolling towards me and i'm not going to backflip shot i jab it okay by the way, look at that. Look at all that. It's just brilliant. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to roll this ball backwards. I'm getting in the same position. And now all I do to make a backflip shot is I jab it. And then I just backflip. That's all I do. It's exactly the same shot. It is. <laughs> look at that. I mean, that's how powerful this move is. I just jab the ball and I backflip. Now you tell me if champ twos are going to save that. Bar down and in. And it's got no mechanic to it it's, it's just a, well it is obviously a mechanic but it's so easy and people are overlooking it because it isn't flashy um, so all you can do is just add that backflip and over time you just get more snappy so the second you hit it you backflip and that's sort of the backflip shot it doesn't really change it though because you've already hit it uh, similar to the old Jezza flick, you know, that, that's a myth in itself. People go, well, you have to do the, the sort of the cancel like that to get the Jezza flick. You don't. Because actually all that's happening on the Jezza flick is that's what's doing the flick. The cancel doesn't hit the ball. So that's a, a little myth there. So you actually you can just do a backflip, a diagonal backflip. I can't do it. And you don't actually need to cancel. And that is the same flick. So hopefully you can see that there's ways you can stagger uh, the offensive moves. So... How do you train this? Guys, you might be disappointed in me when I show you this. I'm going to be honest. This is how you train these moves. And um, I do it differently because I don't believe in training packs. All right. So we're going to go to this one. And this is how I train it. I don't use the, uh, the, the, squ the squares. I don't care about the squares. I just want balls dropping. So I just literally just come in and I just smack it. Instantly reset. That's all I do smack it instantly reset you just come in smack it and then you can instantly reset come in backflip you know and stay close imagine that's the backboard just just you can do this backflip okay and then you can start turning this into power shots I, I don't care about the green squares because i don't pass the green squares i smash it onto the backboard and if you're looking at green squares okay let's just say we, we put it into this uh, green square area uh, no, we don't. Let me try again. <laughs> you can just see how bad my shoot is. Okay, there we go. So generally, you're not going to try a shot like that. You're not going to go in and necessarily try a shot like that in the real game. You're going to, you should be coming in from a good position to be able to make it pretty squared up in all honesty. So that's why I just don't bother about that. I'm just going to smash this over and over. And <laughs> I think I was telling Breeze up every week, you know, when you start doing this a lot and you just keep resetting, and you just smash it different ways, it doesn't have to be on the target. So that's where people get it wrong. Just smash the ball hard. Your goal in this is to get power on that ball. It wants to be moving. There's probably some sort of plugin you can use to really see the speed of it. That's how you train it because these balls do happen a lot in the game. I don't believe in training backs, no. Not, not the workshop maps. Because, I, well, some of them I do. I like this one I like because I can just smash it. But I don't, I'm not interested in hitting the targets and stuff like that. And um, I like training packs because they're on the pitch. But I think free play is better. Free play and playing is better as long as you go in there with a plan. So if I go into a match, um, similar to any sport, you'd go, like any sport I've been part of. So basketball, you'd be like, okay, we're going to work on your uh, low post spin move. All right, great do that for 10 minutes right let's go into a scrim and practice it so you yeah so and, and that's going to get to the next skill 
which is coming up now. So hopefully everyone gets that Coco's uh, shoot in, but we're not going for the green squares. We're going for power. And because I want people, ideally, if I've got a teammate, I want them to be able to go into this ball and go wham and just speed flip into that. And look how powerful that is. That, this is in defense, by the way. If this is in defense, I go boom, we're, we're scoring. I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you. Um, so the next skill, the next highest skill in the game, the next highest percentage finish, according to the data, is the Insta Flick. What, so if if we're talking about what we've just been discussing, why would the Insta Flick be one of the strongest things? Because it gives the ball height. Okay, and I do apologize, uh, guys, if I've missed questions. I've got a big word word document in front of me, so I'm trying to make sure I get every point into this. Um, it's true the aerial defense in champ and in high ground. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's it's not where it should be. In all honesty. So we got this jab, all right, we can jab the ball around and hit in button two. Hit in button two. Button two. I'm not, uh, small bounce control. Do you mean the, uh, like the pads? But what, what I'll talk about now is this, so this, this insta flick. So the next skill is, how would you beat a ball chaser? This is the real one for beating a ball chaser. So we got the jabs, okay? We can beat a ball chaser with jabs as long as we move it. From where, so if like a ball chaser is chasing this ball and he's coming right at me, right? The, the easiest way to beat a ball chaser is to find out where they're coming from. <laughs> as, as crazy as it seems. Like if I've got a ball chaser coming from this this um, this big boost here, I just move the ball. Then they can't they can't beat me. Or if they're coming from this corner, I just move it away. Like I, you just have to move that ball. You just have to move it away. What a lot of people do is everyone's just so obvious about things. They either just play the ball into the opponent's corner or just drive at their net. And, it's, and so it, the people go, oh God, you can't stop ball chases. You can, you just have to move the ball. You've got to be willing in Rocket League. People get too obsessed about scoring. You, you need to take your one hit moves and sometimes turn them into two. What I mean by that is if I shoot this ball, right? That's a one hit move and it could be a goal. But if there's a defender diving at that ball, what's the point? So I go for two hits instead. I go for a low 50, recover with the wave dash, and then just go for the, the second play. You know, you have to be willing to take more plays to get goals now with uh, plays challenging so quick. This oh, yes, yeah, sorry. Absolutely, yeah. You're 100% right with that. So let's get into this next move, the Insta Flick. So how many times have you, and this is why I don't like um, workshop maps, well, specifically one kind uh, medwig to sort of go onto this. Oh, Jonathan, how you doing? Um, so... It's basically dribbling. People dribble and dribble and dribble and dribble, and it is it just is not effective. The only time this is effective, long dribbles, are if you can see the opponent back off, you've got them, specifically if they're on the outside, and your, your name's Moxie, and you can just send a, a 45 and I can't, all right, I'm not Moxie. If you've got a big lance cannon on you, and you can see this, you can build it up, or you can like do a delayed one, brilliant, great, that's fine. But in the real game, in twos, you don't have time to do this. You're just gonna get dunked. So what you do, if you've got a ball chaser, and so we just quickly reiterate, we can absolutely, we can just jab it away from them, all right? Or we go for the Insta Flick. I prefer the Insta Flick. I love the Insta Flick. Um, one, one thing I do wanna just mention about the Insta Flick, the Insta Flick has a different follow to the jab. So if you're really high level and you get this sort of initial jab, you're up and you've got your edge, your balls, and you can do all your good stuff if you've got that, that ability. With an Insta Flick, you are kind of like losing the ball. So if I'm here and I go for my Insta Flick, or as good as it is, I've got now a lot of displacement to make to get to that ball. So it, this works specifically better in ranks under GC2 because everyone just dives in and they just chase. So what your mistake is, you'll catch the ball. Everyone just catches the ball. Waste of time, honestly. If you just go into a game now and never catch the ball, and we'll do it, never catch the ball and just every time you just do that, doesn't matter if it's not quality, it doesn't, doesn't need to be. And every time you just, boom, and again, if you just do this over and over, and that's actually a drill, by the way, guys. That's the drill, the Insta Flick drill. It's from the uh, the grounded thing. Nothing's changed there. Okay, if you just get really good using this white thing on the floor, you should be able to know exactly where the ball is from following the white thing on the floor. I never look at the ball. I want to see the opponents. When you've got someone in front of you, you're here. Right, ball chaser comes in. Wham. They're gone. That's a goal. It's an open net. Because after they've countered, you've got the counter here. Their teammate, this is why we wait here so we can actually keep looking. We look and we see their teammate come in and we just go bump and we've, that's it. That's a goal. And then you just put your shot on and that's it. It's as easy as that. 
Bouncer, are you working on level? Yeah, bounce dribbles are great. Uh, don't misconstrue me with that one. Absolutely, you need it all. But what I'm saying, like, so this is great because you can see the opponent over and over. And obviously, you can really come around this and sort of start smashing shots onto their backboard and work them down. But what I'm saying, and again, look at that. The jab goes onto the backboard. They'd be screwed there. Now you can really set up a shot, whatever. But it comes from the first one is the jab. It's just percentage. And then the next one is the, the insta flick. So it's, if it's high, I call it the towel whip flick. So you're there. And again, I'm using this on the floor and I'm looking around. I'm looking around while I'm doing Doing this guys so i'm not just here thinking about that that's peripheral you, you're looking at it and you go right it's not coming down for a minute i'm, I'm looking around i'm trying that was a new yeah, big bounce i've seen but i'm looking around using vision 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 all right so that's the tail whip flick the insta flip is um so flick let's say i'm here right and this is a dead ball they're not ca and let's go back to pressure plays okay they haven't over committed so we can't get a counter so when we again just to reiterate if they dive in if we've got a 2v1 we go 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 we do not stop so if this is a 2v1 i'm bam and i just i don't care i'm off and we're just gonna go we're just gonna go crazy it doesn't have to be good i don't care and i'm gonna smack them and my teammate will finish it off it doesn't have to be good quality all right but if they're both back this changes things because what i don't want to do if they're both back is i don't want to do this early and it's where vision comes in because if they're both back and i just give a week sort of like that we're screwed because that's a turnover of possession so this, again, is where you can use a bounce dribble instead, uh, James, based on that. So, you know, you get it and you sort of bounce dribble it. And I like to do this because this bounce dribble here, I like to do these single jumps, is that can then change rhythm into a flick. And we're going we're gonna to go over that. Yeah, it is. There are a lot of situations. But really, the main situations are if they dive in, smash them hard, fast, Okay, once you've got them backpedaling using that Coco's aiming draw, just smash, smash, smash. Once you've got them pinned into their net, which you should have, that's your goal. You then grab the boost and you keep going for jab, 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 jab. Or if you can't get a jab off, let's say uh, you've got real low momentum and this jab isn't going to do well, like you can't get a good jab, jab, tail whip flick. All right, now the best way to do it is you boost underneath it. So I'm here. I'm just trying to break this down. Jab, instant boost, and then flick, and then we're back onto their backboard. We can go for demos on the way to this boost, and same again, and now we're flicking it. Look at that. Onto the backboard, and we can come here. They don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just going to flick it over and over again, and they're going to be moving around like all over the place right now, and they're going to be really stressed because they're going to be on zero boost here, and they, they want this boost. And if, we go for, if they go for that boost, great. That's where you can turn in your shot. Again, just a jab. It's, it, look how effective the jab is. And the jab, of course, the extension off the jab is the hook shot. And then obviously, like I said, the back we've got. So the next move is the insta flick tower with flick. And if you did nothing but that, you're going to be really good. So if you want to get up the ranks, just get good at this. Honestly, even if you think you're throwing the ball away, the main thing is when you hit that board is you follow it. So if I do a tail whip flick, I don't go, all right, here we go, tail whip flick. Oh, I really need boost. You don't do that. Of course not. It doesn't matter. They don't know how much boost you've got. So as soon as you're on this offense, bam, and I'm off. And I'm following. Maybe I do a wave dash across the boost. You know, I'm, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, I'm pushing, scaring them. All right? Hopefully that makes sense. And then the last main skill is your jump pops. It's a double jump pop. And it's so simple. Just that. <laughs> it really is that. So you just come here, you just double jump pop. It, again, it's got the number one key from the data I've been observing for scoring goals, which is height. Height seems to be even better in a lot of senses than moving the ball to the side, you know, with the power slides and stuff like that. Although we do love that. But height seems to just be so far and away the best way to, to destroy people in the lower ranks. When I say lower ranks, I'm talking under GC3 realistically. Um, the, the double pop is a great way to do it. And the reason the double pop is so good is because it has what's known as a rhythm break built into it. So what you'll notice when you see a lot of players, and that's why I love Insta Flicks, is they'll do this. So they get the ball in the car and they go, yep, yep, okay, and go. It's so easy to time that. As a defender, you can time that every, it's so easy. So with the Insta Flick, we're already breaking their rhythm because it's just like, what the hell, you just did it there. But with this double jump pop, it's really weird because what people expect is they expect a jump and then a flick. They expect that order. But when you're just driving around, and the great thing is this moves at speed, you can just do that. It just goes up really quick. And honestly, you know, Precepts, I know, is in the chat here, or was in the chat. SSL in ones, uh, but even his prime top top 20 in ones, okay? If he'll tell you how ridiculous the double jump pop is uh, <laughs> for scoring goals, because it's just so easy. And the cool thing is now, remember, 
we don't have to catch this ball to double jump pop it. This is similar to the flick. Everything, in my opinion, should be done off the carry. When people are spending, and that's why again, why I don't like workshop, if you're doing this all day, that ain't, that ain't what you want. You want to be quick with things. So you could flick a ball up, okay, whatever, let's say it's not very good. Then you could double jump pop it and stuff like that. But the, the one thing of a double jump pop is don't do it, okay, if they're facing you. So if they're facing you here and they're about to challenge, if you do a double jump pop, you're essentially teeing it up for them. Unless, you know, they, they might bump you or something like that. When you would do a double jump pop is once you've backpedaled them. So the best way to backpedal them is either a jab or a tower whip flick. We literally backpedal them. So we bump, we backpedal them. Now they're, they're moving backwards here. And then all you've got to do is just, just like pop it. It's, it's so effective. It's easier to do in a game when you can move around the players. Okay. So those are the three things. So just to reiterate, the two types, what you should be aiming for, the two types of method to score is pressure and counterattacks. And to be patient when you're defending, remember the defensive seminar, when we're defending, we are defending. We're not trying to get on offense until we can get our counter. And then when we're pressuring, we're taking boots, we're playing the ball high over and over and over again, wearing them out. Double jump pops, insta flicks, Coco's aim training, smash it if you want to get good at really smashing clears because that's a timing thing. Okay, why do some people have bullets and some people have sort of these these sort of things like, man, you ever had that where you just can't get any, you go, what the hell, there's no power on my shots today. Well, that's because your timing's off. And actually one of the reasons I believe that a lot of the Middle Eastern players were so good at shooting is because of the delay with their ping. So they were shooting late. And actually that's how you want to do it. A lot of people shoot early. So this is an early shot, just so you can see. See how it's sort of like, it's almost like a push. A lot of people hit it with the tail, which is fine if we're doing tail with flick. But when you're shooting, you want to sort of like get, it's like in the ball. It's like you, you go and flip through the ball. So it's almost like you're imagining that you're going to go through the, like your, see how it's a flip is the exact second you touch it that's the thing and um, yes you will be able to view this later 100 percent. this will all be saved you'll be able to view this as well so flick madness so get the ball bouncing okay and why why don't we just get it here why don't we just because i don't want you doing that i don't want the ball on on the car it's it's just not viable really in the, in the game the boom and then look at this look at this thing okay and then use it to get another oh there we go double jump pop that time and use that use that and you'll get really good at that you know that is a, actually an important skill where so many people will do, I'm just trying to do what players do, they'll do this and they just get dunged and they go ball chasers, I can't beat ball chasers, you can't beat anything, you cannot beat anything you cannot see. That's why we were, you know, scared of the dark, right? <laughs> you don't, if you're not out there, how are you had to deal with it? So. Um, we're going to open this to some Q&As. Hopefully this has been helpful. I know it's real short, but I'm going to jump into a game now. And hopefully, I mean, this is only, where are we? If I can get in there. Ah, okay, champ two. So pretty much where everyone is. And we're just going to use the three techniques we've just talked about. Okay. Um, hope, hopefully I don't just completely botch this. But we're going to be looking at the, the, the smash onto the backboard. The um, waiting in defense deep so that we can get a quick offensive play. It doesn't have to be quality. And we're going to be using insta flicks and double jump pops. And we're going to use that hopefully to win. I've got, as you can see, a little bit of delay here. So I'm just going to do a very basic uh, accessible ki uh, kickoff. And we're going to wait here. So we wait here. And then I like to move into this spot. Because now, like, see how Method Man here, and I'm explaining it so I'm probably getting scored on. But Method Man, I'm watching him there. If I'm here for me, because I'm facing here, even if I see Method Man's out of it, I can't actually shoot on net. But if I'm here and I can see Method Man, I can shoot on net. Anyway, uh, so we're coming here and he's gone up. So we're going to wait for our counter, which is here. Now they go, boom. And look how it be. I'm straight on this. Bam. Doesn't have to be quality, guys. Bam. Doesn't have to be quality. And if we make a mistake like that, we just simply recover as a duo and we're back in our system. All right. So that's actually really good from them. And it's bad for me not to get on it. So here we're watching for our opportunity. Bam. And there it is. Straight away, I just go up. Bam. Just, it doesn't have to be quality. That's a goal. If I just leave that for my teammate. Look how easy this game is. Champ 2. But everyone complicates it because everyone says, I want to do musties. Forget it. Just just clear the ball on a counter. There's the counter and you just get rid of it. Because everyone doesn't think anymore. They don't defend. So that's what makes this game so easy. A little bit lag there, guys. Jeez. Uh, I do apologize. So here, you could, you know, again, you could look for jabs and stuff like that. We do a, a low 50 there. 
And we've got a 2v1, so we do want to be aggressive really in the 2v1. So now we're going to mix this in with the defensive seminar. It's a little bit d difficult for me to, to... Okay, I'll leave that because now we're on a counter. See how they're in the corner. And there we go. Go, 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 go. And I get the supersonic and I'm just going to just barrel through. I'm literally just barreling through here. Get out of town, sunshine. Barrel through. And we've got him. Now we're looking at our pressure plays. This guy has nothing. Okay, we're dragging. Drag him all the way through. He's got nothing. So if he backs off now... We can now start to get to this early offense. There's the quick flick. The tower whip flick doesn't really matter. Boom, put it in. And again, they're in our corner. So again, champ two, it's easy if you stop holding the ball. Just get rid of it. Boom, and I'm off. One touch, insta flick. It's, it's, that's what you want to be doing, guys. Just make the game easy for yourself by hot potato in it. Okay, we'll get some pressure here. Inside, remember that inside stuff? Boom, okay, we're near the net, so we jab it. That was a great play from them. A little bit risky from the teammate, but the ball's high. We're going to stick around here. Great jab. Look at that. Brilliant. So we're forced back. I don't like the rotation there. We're going to have to do some defensive stuff. Nice flick. And we're off. So hopefully he just smashes it. Yeah, just go for it. <laughs> wow, look at the lag. And we, we could go for that and score, to be fair, because we know he's coming in from a bad angle. Um, but I didn't really have good vision. Now i got good vision. So be willing to go all the way back, and we're off. Straight away get to my position. That's a goal. Why? Because the counter. So... Yeah, it's so easy to win at champ 2 and champ 3 if you just are willing to counter the ball. Yeah, just counter hard. Don't don't be weak on the counter. I uh, should give him a nice shot. That's where most people are messing up. They're taking too long to counter and then they're wasting plays when there's two back. I was hoping to get a two back play here. Look at this. So, what you could do if we was in, if we were in comms like, okay. It's like I just smash him. I would actually just smash that ball. That's my bad. So, actually yeah, it is my bad, but I just want to say, look at this. He took too long. So he should have shot that on the bounce, and that's a goal. Because we had a count. We had a 2v1. You can't waste time. And it doesn't have to be quality. That's the problem. He was looking for quality. Oh, got jerked over there. He was looking for quality. We don't need quality. We just need something going to force their hand into a position they want to, don't want to be in. I apologize. There you go. Look at this. So this could be good for us. I'm going to actually just turn here. We got jabs. Look at this. Beautiful. This guy's good. He's jabbing the ball. We've got this pressure now. And now we're just sort of asking them these questions, you know. <laughs> the lag's making it difficult. Do you want to stay in your net and get peppered? Or do you want to take a risk for boost? We're going to wait for an offensive. Ah, oh, you see, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So he was second man. Why did he come to the corner? And that's why, look, see, he keeps coming here. And so now we've lost the, the counter. So that's not a true counter because the second man has thrown the ball away before they've overcommit. That's why you have to wait back as second man. So it's very simple. So I wait back here. That's probably a goal. Um, but we didn't have anything on that. But you see how just him coming out has blocked up the whole of our movement. That was a great passing play. I should have challenged that. But again, we dove in there and we got countered. So you just see how it's all off counters, which is why I say counters are the most effective. Because they're the ones you don't really want to have on you. Okay, now we got an opportunity here. Whoa, that was so laggy. Straight, look, I don't waste time. Just, it doesn't matter. It's not on net. But now I'm forced. Bam. Got the level three. Now look at this. Look at the confusion. Perfect. Now my teammate should be able to score that. Because they got no boost. So as soon as I get this counter. Notice, notice I didn't waste time. Just get there and grab that level three. Then I, I can watch it. I can just watch this. It's like a nice viewer. You know. Get some popcorn. I know they're screwed. Because I've just made them go all the way back. In the middle. They have to go to the middle. Where a lot of players cannot path. So they only know how to path on these. So I get them all the way in the middle, and then I can just, yeah, just chill. So we don't have a counter here. Okay, so look at this. So we're going to go for a jab. Bonk. Good bump from them. Ah, well played. Well played. Getting that boost. And again, we just use that flick, jab, whatever, that double pop. Look how easy the game is, guys. <laughs> all right, until that happens. But you see, it all comes from the pop here. Just pop it. Again, just literally popping it. Now look at this. Over and over, we're reloading the boost over and over unfortunately he's shot but look how slow he is getting out because he's got no boost i'll actually just grab that into our teammate so they can uh, jab it all because though we shot if we if he didn't shoot that alex didn't shoot and he kept jabbing it all right we would have scored i can guarantee you 100 percent because i've got the data so well played that was a good shot from them i tried to force the front post i'm gonna try and like lift that high before they do there we go we just take him out and we got a counter so we're trying to push it but that's fine doesn't really need anything too spectacular here. It's always a bit laggy off the uh, the demos. I can see their second man. I've missed the ball, but I'm still going to push forward. That's perfect from the teammate. Again, you don't have to have good mechanics. I missed the ball, and I'm still pushing because we're still on a counter. If you haven't noticed, I'll actually keyframe that. 
I want you to look at Ooga Booga on this play, and this is why countering and quality doesn't matter. As long as you're countering, your quality doesn't matter. We just head back. We want to trap here. Comes the overcommit. There's the dodge. That means he's screwed. That means it's champ two, and we're off. <laughs> My bad. Oh, God, it can't get in control of it. And we're off. Oh, I missed the flick. Hopefully, you can see that when net was open because he dove into the corner because they dodge into everything. I just couldn't get control of it. Uh, I'm going to play in the lag stuff. GG, well played to that guy. So, let me just show you this. So, you can see really how easy the game is there. We use three moves. I, I think we did. People will probably say, no, you use more than that. But I, I just want to show you this because this is... It all comes off the counters. All of our goals come off the counters. So our goal here is we want them to do something absolutely absurd. I hear it all the time. I'm diamond. I can musty. I can pre-flip. Big deal. Can you win games? No, you're diamond. I'm not interested in that. I just like winning games. So I just wait. Good good luck. You know, you're trying to flip reset from there. We're champ for two. What the hell? So I just get the E boom and we're off. He's in our net. 2v1 straight away. Straight away, it doesn't matter. Don't need quality. Straight away, hit it. And usually what I do is if I can't get it to the net, because again, what I've done is I've forced him to collapse to the middle. Look at this. By doing this, right, Method Man knows. This is, he already knows he's screwed because he has to go to the middle. They don't, they don't shadow anymore. They don't know how to shadow. They don't know what shadowing is anymore. They've had it beaten out of them. So they don't believe in defense. So he, he goes into the middle to defend this when he could be playing a step ahead. Now, here's this cool part for us as offensive players right now is if he goes to here, to here, we take a second and we wham it onto the net. If he doesn't, I like to actually shoot to the corner because it's volatile. It usually bounces into the middle and it means you can get the level three. That's what I like to do. And actually, people don't know how to play corners, guys. If you've got the defensive seminar, um, you guys know exactly how to play corners. And obviously, we're going to cover this more in depth on the offensive seminar as well, what we can do in the corners. But they're going to collapse in. It's going to bounce out and your teammate will follow up. That's it. Oh. I don't know what that button does. That's exactly what happens here. We just play it to the corner. That's him out of the game because they, they just they don't they don't shadow. And there you go. It's an easy open net. But that wasn't the one I actually wanted to go over. I wanted to go over this last bit. It wasn't successful, but it doesn't matter. Again, we got a decent finish rate that game. It wasn't spectacular. Here we go again. Really good defending from the teammate. He's landed. And by the way, in offense, a little tip for you. Never, ever end up in the opponent's net. All right, there's just something to be concerned about. That was a great play from him. So, is it this bit? Maybe a bit later. I just want to show you why this is so powerful on counters. Here we go. I mean, this is it. So, it was unsuccessful. I did a really bad job here. I think I completely whiffed. Yes, I did. My teammate comes in. Now, this is what you want to be looking at. He just got 100 boost. He burnt it. He's got 71. He was supersonic. He kills his rhythm. Why? Because we got the threat of a shot. Great. That's why we position in this way and we don't follow out to the corner. Can't stress that enough. Don't listen to people who tell you to not wait in there. Easy. I've just riven broke him. I've stopped his momentum. Brilliant. He's got to reload his... Oh, look at all that boost. His boost was useless. And now we hit this ball. If we got it a bit more central, we've really got him. But here, look at this. Now, this is where it's not about quality. It's just about touches. Alex hits it. Look at it again. He's boosting. He's boosting. He's moving. That's a hell of a lot of movement. And now he collapses forward and he's pushing up here. So you can see how much confusion there is in their team and how much the obsession of boost really can be countered here and uh, can make it awkward. We're going to see it again here. Something special, all right? We got the counter again. We're going to look at this. Actually, this, this was the one again. Method Man into our net with zero boost. A very common scene in champ two, champ three. Never do this, never end up in the opponent's net unless you've scored and definitely, definitely don't do it with no boost. And now we're off and we just couldn't get anything going. I mean, this was just terrible for me. Didn't do a very good job here. But the reason I want to show you this is because we counter fast, Ooga Booga wants boost. They want boost because they burn boost instantly because that's how they've been told to play. And they burn this boost, they go to the middle. Perfect, we pin them, that's your goal. You want to pin them to the middle now he wants boost i know he wants boost he knows he wants boost obviously there's five seconds left and look at what he does to try and get some boost he will just turn and challenge the insta flick had i have not botched this flick as i was trying to explain to you guys this was just because i'm lagging around if that flick lands which it should have like you can see actually the lag bit there you hopefully you can see that i'm not making this up i genuinely do have the lag on a stream so there's like a lag hit right you see the boop, boop, there that should have flicked it um, but the lag so that would have just been a goal because he's willingly due to us pinning him straight to the middle and attacking the middle we have forced him to go out of goal side position which means the net's open 
and he has to dive. And that's how you beat a ball chaser. You get ready to flick all the time. All right, so it's flicks, 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 jabs. Never take the ball direct to where they're coming from. So notice here even, right? When I see him turn, hopefully this, this also makes sense. When he turns and I, I see his nameplate, and I, I know what he's done. I've seen his nameplate disappear here, which means he's turned here. So now my flick, I'm actually trying to flick it with a bias towards this side to make it less likely to get dunked. If I flick it straight at him, there is a higher percentage chance of getting dunked. If you were really good, you could probably argue that you'd want to flick it that way to never be counted because I'm flicking it to the inside. Technically, outside uh, could, uh, could shoot that one in. And that's the wrong button. Oh, that's definitely the wrong button. So you can see that that was to go straight around him. I focus too much on keeping close possession one stop. Yeah, you, countering has to be quick. You have to be fast in a counter. That's the really the biggest thing holding people back is they are trying to get too much quality and they're trying to like dribble for long periods of time and they're trying to set up offensive air dribbles and stuff like this. You don't need that, all right? What you need is you just need to get something going to force them back towards their uh, their net here. So if you guys can see, see this pop up over here. Um, so yeah, let me know if there's any questions while I'm just chilling over here. If there's any questions. Um, yeah, thanks for coming into this, guys. And obviously, I know you're probably thinking, well, that was like, that went really quick and I'm, I'm sort of confused. Does he just say that we just jab it, flick it and double jump it? And that's true. That's exactly what I'm saying. There's more to it. There's much more situations. There's also lateral dribbles. There's also many systems within systems. I have a whole uh, system within the lateral dribble, for example. Um, that we do in the passive system and stuff like that but we are doing a four hour seminar on this way more deeper way more in depth on the 21st sunday the 21st so not next sunday the sunday after um, i'm going to message everyone that was involved in the defensive seminar because a lot of people in the defensive seminar have messaged me asking like you know let them know when the offensive seminar is available if you do want to take part in the the offensive the full version of this where you will actually get into games we've got loads of drills you'll get hands-on coaching from myself raid and precepts so we we'll check your form make sure you're flicking correctly make sure you're jabbing correctly make sure you know all the ins and outs and you can ask questions live uh, then message me message me in the discord and we can get that going and you've got, uh, like I say, two weeks. We're going to have it, uh, like last time, maxed out at 30 spaces. Um, but yeah, let me know any questions. I know there's a big delay on the, <laughs> the stream. Yeah, just move it downfield. Like I say, and, and remember as, as well, right? So just to echo off the back of that, uh, Jonathan, if you're, if you're trying to move this ball fast, right? You're trying to counter, okay? And you... You move this ball like downfield, but like that, that is dangerous because even a bad player will go, oh, and they've got this now, haven't they? So they're back in the jabs and now they've got height on the ball and now they've put you under pressure. So what you want is you want to be able to actually make sure that we are getting something, even that will do, because now maybe, maybe at least I'm behind it. You know, but you want to be able to follow it before them and be able to get some sort of height on it and tap it over. With the fence, yeah, ask questions about that. With the fence, I notice I'm inconsistent with the size of my triangles, tightening up that is. So when you think about triangle defending, one of the big issues with triangle defending, if we just jump into a game here, the issue with triangle defending for a lot of people is they're not following the fundamental rule, which is you should do it when you have a boost advantage. All right? So when you are on a boost advantage is when you want to really be looking for the triangle defense. If you don't have a boost advantage, it can be quite dangerous. The more of an advantage based on the speed is how tight you can make your triangle. I'm going to try and show you here because what you want to do with all Rocket League is you essentially want to be able to get the challenge in before they start to begin to create. Because right here, if he gets a first touch on this, now it's awkward for me because he's got momentum. So what I would do if I'm trying to do a triangle, boom, I'm going to grab this. Then as he comes, I'm going to try and, okay, here we go. So now as he comes here, I'm going to try and make my triangle there. I'm going to try and make it as early as possible before he gets anything going. Uh, it's a little bit of a shame that that's happened. But hopefully you can see that. Uh, hopefully that helps, James. You want to make it as tight as possible. But what, I, what I'm saying is, what I like to do is I like to do the inside to force them to the mid boost after taking that corner boost to level three. Hopefully it's, I'll try and show you. I'll try and show you. This is going to sound like just random ranting. Um, let me show you. So I'm here. Let's so say I'm here, right? 
I take this level three, but I can't get the ball, right? I cannot get the ball. So what I do is I'll funnel on the inside, just as, you know, we, we talked about in the defensive seminar. Let's just pretend I've got that one as well. And then once he begins to push it to the wing, I will then come in here and then beat him on the first touch if I can with the triangle. That's the idea with that one. Um, but again, you just want to do it as early as possible if, if you can, you know. Uh, any tips on staying discipline within the passive system uh, for the whole game? I always start strong, then end up chasing the speed. That usually comes from fear. And if you are chasing and you are speeding around, you're giving up too much space. Uh, let's just jump into a game. Let me try and show you what I mean. We'll go, we'll go into another rank one real quick. See if I can show you some... Ah, it's going to be tough because I'll probably just get bumped off the ball. But what is happening, if you are struggling with the passive system, you're rushing around, it means you're giving up space somewhere. So, yeah... What Precept says, play less games with more focus, 100%. But you need to block them being able to do anything. I'm going to probably get the guy Rage quit here, my teammate. And we're going to probably have a bit of an issue with this. But imagine you've got a teammate. I'll try and force first man, which is always awkward with this ping. You can see I'm not making it up. Jesus, I can't. I can't. I just, what the hell? Hopefully you can see I'm not making this up, guys. Uh, so let's say I, I want to be close here. So let's say I'm, I'm following this guy. Right, I know I'm on low boost. I know this isn't good. So I, as the first man don't want to back off and that's where people start rushing all right they if you stay close they just don't know what to do great backwards wave dash really cool you know share that one on reddit i just follow the ball and just double jump and i score a goal now what would you rather win or do a backwards wave dash that's the question again so here what will happen is he will back off and rotate now i've got this space and now you can start your counters if you can actually get around the ball and like me that was really bad from me and that's why is because i pushed the ball into him so I tried to actually power slide that to the outside and I just missed the ball. So I got a bad touch and hit it into him. So hopefully you can see that all low 50. But I really want to, I'm trying to, the reason I'm trying to push offense here is because I'm trying to desperately show you first man. Let him, let him get the ball actually. Okay, so here we go. So I'm not going to back off. I'm really not going to back off here as I'm first man. And I'm going to force them to have to make a play. It's so hard with this lag. I can't lie to you. I'm really struggling to actually read this game. Because it just they hit it and then it just teleports past me. But the issue here is that the the, the, the player rotating goes straight wide and they should go back down the middle um, because they're now the second man. But again, it's tough to force first man in these games. I'm just going to try and hit this away and, and force this first man. So if I just hit that away. So what I would do here is I wouldn't really back off. So I'd be here the whole time and I can see Goku. You know, I can use my camera and I wouldn't back off again. And by doing that, you own this ball. Now I've, I've claimed the ball. And now I can do all sorts of stuff around the net. We can do back to our offensive stuff. Hitting the ball high. And again, I'm not backing off. Grab that boost. But I'm not backing off. Use your camera, by the way. Look down with your camera as that ball moves out. So if I'm here and I look down like that, it's hard to do it when you're not in the right spot. But you can hopefully see how that works really well. So this could be a goal for them, to be fair. But it's tough because I'm trying to... Hopefully that explains it, <laughs> basically. Uh... So it's difficult because of the diverse range of instill volleyball rotation. People play threes and twos, uh, like twos a lot of time. That's absolutely true. But remember, like here, technically this is a counter. So we need want, we want to go. We want to go hard and fast. We don't want to control it. So like as soon as we get there, there it is, that overcommit, I'm off, I'm off. That doesn't even need to be good. I'll wait and I'm just going to tail with flick and we're just pushing them back. Look at this, no boost. I'm just flicking this ball around with no boost. And that's actually a goal if he, uh, if he puts that one in. And now we've got the level three, success. And now I take this. Now, this is where you can mix up your defended. So you take it here. And then, bam. There, look at the, the position. Just smack it. Doesn't even have to be good. And hopefully your teammate follows it up. Um, is what you want. Again, we got a 2v1 here. So we're just going to go straight away. Even if it doesn't end up well. Ideally, your teammate wants to be following these balls up. So second man. That's why it's easy to play second man. So straight away, boom. You, you, as second man, you need to be looking to when, when you're going to come into the play. And here, this is where you do that okay so that's how you play pacifist as the first man it's so hard to pull it off in solo queue nothing works in solo queue turn sideways there like the side flip all right and you're gonna have a bit of success wait for this guy to count i mean it's just so easy it's hard to like that these like here this is the easy stuff in this game all right you get them to overcommit, and you just try and shoot on it you see the net was open there but i just missed but then you can start your pressure if you wanted i wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that unless you can get the read on it but now we're popping the ball high and if they save it we just rinse and reload yeah and again there's an overcommit so straight away just smack that ball we got him he's gonna probably miss or pass it i'll leave that for my team that's a great double touch but that's what you want to do just wear him out 
And he, he should have jabbed that straight away. Hopefully he flicks it. Nice. Well played. And that's an open net for me. If I don't miss, which I do, of course. Doesn't matter. Try and hit that. Again, that's what I say with people, you know. A lot of people go, oh my god, I missed the open net. We'll have a hundred of them. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It just comes down to, you know, how often you finish it. Again, there's a jab. Which gets me to level three. Stay close. Perfect. And we know he can't follow. So this guy, yeah, perfect. And again, a second man. I'm going to go in early there because they're overcoming. I did it. We wanted that mid-boost, but that's sort of what you're after. But that, that's on me if we lose this one. And look, he can't double touch this one. So we did perfect. There it is. And we're off. So there's many ways to take this. We'll just put that pressure on to force one of them not to get the boost. So we know this guy, Recon, doesn't have the boost here. All right. So you're just looking around for stuff like that. Again, here, there's an, uh, not an overcoming yet. That's a great shot. I should have gone off the backboard. But there is where you look for the overcommit. And you'd obviously, if you were playing properly and you weren't me, you would just go onto the backboard here and just defend that. But that's, that is on me. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Missing open nets is the casual, man. It's the casual. But that's on me, 100%. But uh, yeah, it would be good to maybe do this as a an off, an, like a not live thing because it's, it's the lag on the hits, man. That's the hardest bit to think. So there's an overcommit realistic. Do, but just Oh, okay. So I don't like that he's behind there. Maybe that's that's me. But at least we're pushing it. But now they're back. That's why I don't like that they're, they're, they're off on the walls. Because you have to be really precise on the passing. Where I just want to... Like here, he flicks it up. I could just follow if I wanted to. So we can just get something going. But again, that takes too long. Now go, go, go. Just something. Anything. Just get in there, buddy. You know what I mean? You've got to go. And if he just shoots that high, we've got him collapsed. But they take too long and now they're back. So this is, this is actually a really good example of just people taking way too long to get their offense. And you, you just want to, once they've screwed up, like right here, look, this is a screw up from this guy. He's out, see how he flicks, flips out the way? Go, 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 it's a 2v1. Just attack hard. Hey, how you doing, Matt? Good to see you, brother. Hope you're having a good one. Hope you had a good New Year's. Hope everyone had a good New Year's. Oh, baby. Oh, oh my bad. Oh, God. <laughs> My bad. Oh, a little tip, actually, on offense. We'll talk about kickoffs real quickly. The absolute main goal in twos on offense is to kill the ball. That's the absolute main goal because it's easier for you to recover from. It's not as volatile. So right now, we might get a counter. But, so we don't want to throw this away because they're both backed off. Ah, he shouldn't have caught it. Shouldn't have caught it, even though they dive there. Hopefully, he just goes and jabs it. Just jab that. There you go. And just jab that. So, again, because we delayed our counter, they're allowed to get back. And that's one of the issues you don't want to. You just want to go. Hopefully, he just goes. Because now I can just start flying it. At, oh, he's not even following. But that's what you need. You need to, on those counters, go. But that's on me because I'm trying to force first man there. But hopefully, that explains it. You basically want a shadow. You just can't do it. You just, honestly, you can't do it in solo queue. <laughs> it's not possible uh, to, play, to play a dynamic first man. But yeah, man, thank you everyone for coming in. I can't believe it. It's uh, really, really great stuff. Like I say, uh, if you don't know what the Discord is, Discord is a free app. It's a free app where you can talk to people. We've got a Discord with a bunch of players. It can play, you know, you can look for games, people who play the system that we do, people who've done the course, who are like really clued up on it as well. And you can play with those guys. And uh, yeah, send me a message on Discord. The link is in the description of any of the videos apart from this one because I'm not sure how to put it onto the live videos. But just go load up any video, go to the description description click click the um the little arrow to get more information and then just go onto the discord and give me a message you should be able to see me in the chat room you might have to press the verify tick to get into the main chat rooms but yeah give me a message and i can tell you more about the offensive seminar the full version of this and hopefully yeah get you more of a complete game but i'll, ch I'll chill here for like another five minutes I give it to a quarter pass just in case anyone does want to come in uh, and ask any questions as well. By the way, while I'm doing this, I'll just show you how you you know you can practice your free play stuff. What you want to do again for free play is you want to sort of focus primarily on, on sort of mastering the, the basics. So a lot of stuff like flipping the ball, like imagine you just worked into space and then using the jab there, for example, or come in here and just using your jab there just it's a hook shot essentially is what it is but just getting used to sort of setting up your own hook shots it's really valuable and a lot of time when i'm playing sort of like free play is i'll just work on these hook shots uh, and you just it's just quite chilled out and you just ramp it up and then maybe you don't get a good first touch so you can go for your shots but most of the time 
when I'm warming up, it's, it is just hook shots. It really is just hook shots because they're just so valuable. And like I say, if we go really high, let me see if I can get a high hook shot, we could add in a backflip to that, or we could just try and kill it and shoot it. But if you're not capable of violence, you're not peaceful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit of a funny name for the system. You're a pacifist until you get a counter. And then you're uh, an antagonist, I guess. You just want to go extremely fast. Most of the time it's chilled because most of the time you want to give the opponent the ball because they're going to mess up. Well, not so much the... But basically, I believe it's so easy to get good at defending for your rank that I'm willing to play more defense to get much more quality offense where I can just pin the ball onto the backboard and, and force them on. If there's an opponent behind you, you gotta you gotta use reverse come because yeah. So um, depends on the situation. Obviously, if you're supersonic and you're max speed, you shouldn't really need to look because you, you should be able to outrun them and then do that. The problem with uh, looking behind you is sometimes you can see the ball and not the player. And as you can see, they actually looked through the ball, so there might be something to do with that. I don't know. Maybe that's a future update. <laughs> Updates. That's funny. Um, but like you know. Yeah, you got to be careful. What I would actually recommend, not to spend too long looking behind if, if they're like right behind me, because what I don't want to do is I don't want to take too much data in. Um, in. In Olympic lifting gyms, they don't have any mirrors. And the reason they don't have any mirrors is because if you do an Olympic lift, you shouldn't, you don't want to watch yourself because there's too much stuff going in your head. You just want to execute it and that's it. So if I'm dragging the ball back, and I get like, and I can see them, right? I can probably see that they're here. I just want to go fast. I just want to get that ball moving fast so I'm safe. And then I can use this to track them and use my camera in these sort of situations. Situations where you don't need to automatically jump, which is on the backboard. So when you go onto this backboard, it, of course, it, you know, aside from a demo, but again, you, you will see them based on the angle. So you could avoid the demo if they come for it. But if they're not coming for that demo, as I just go up this backboard again, what you would do is you, you know you could now quickly look if you want to but i would actually look here when i'm not doing any inputs to you know flick or anything like that can you push to the ssl rank hopefully we've got a new series me raid and presets we're doing freeze to ssl it's actually been the most fun i've had playing rocket league since the old days it's been a lot of fun and um we've really we're breaking down just it's actually i think presets will agree i don't have raids here we're basically doing this stuff so we're teaching this stuff in freeze high flicks we use tail whip flicks all the time shots onto the backboard and double pops and that's basically it and yeah we're going to ssl with that kill the ball on offense kill the ball on offense on offense kill the ball on offense um well you can kill the ball on offense i don't know i don't know what i was talking about there but killing the ball just means to take it from a bounce so it's now like it's like a it's not bouncing. It's not an active ball. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that on offense unless you've got a challenge. You can do a low 50. But on defense is where you really want to be killing the balls, ideally, because it'll force them. Because like, if you have a bouncing ball like this and you want to look at the ball, you're going to get dunked. And if I'm here and I'm looking like this and I see him go up, it could be really hard for me to make the save. So when I'm on defense, I really like to, if I can, get that ball killed, move into a position I'm more happy with, which is space, then re-establish my bounce to then get back onto the offense. And you can do that with an instant flick. So you come around, you get to your space, and boom, and now you've got your instant flicks. And now I can see you can go up for your shots if you wanted, or you can keep flicking. And yeah, here, here we get as well. And I'll tell you something, actually, a really cool skill is if you can pull this off. So say you're dribbling this ball back, you've got someone going for a demo here. The coolest way, the absolute coolest way is jump as they go for the demo. And as soon as you jump, wave dash and boost and you'll actually demo them. It's really cool. Just play music to drown out the air. <laughs> Maybe misheard for the, yeah, I think it might be for defense there, Matt, but great question, man. Killing the ball is what you want on the kickoff in twos. Absolutely. Always hit the ball high. Is playing as one player defense and one player attacking all the match work? Well, you don't really want to do that. You you want to back each other up. Like you, you don't have to rotate, but you just have to back each other up. So if I'm, if I'm first man here, my teammate should be in a position that allows him to back me up, which could be here, you know, could be there, could be, could be even here. But as long as he can back me up, 
but the main thing is I wouldn't I wouldn't go all into the corners. But the issue is a lot of people in the opponent's corners will start flicking into the corner, and now they're sort of flat-footed in the corner. If I am going to play into the corner, I'll do it off a shot like that so that I don't arrive flat-footed, meaning that if that was to bounce out... Let me try and get a better... Just like literally what we did in the game. So I do it from here, let's say. So if it does bounce out, I'm ready to get the, the shot on target, hopefully, <laughs> Like we did in the game or if uh, let's say we do this and it hits that what i can do is just grab that and just leave and get behind my teammate if they're here they can come forward that that's again comes back to that whole thing is like you don't you don't want to be putting yourself into the opponent's corner so many people start their offense here and in twos it's just like yeah you can often on it it's just not it's just really not high percent it's so, so low percentage like uh, honestly if you crunch the numbers on that you're scoring about 5%. If you crunch the numbers on insta flicks and jabs, you should be closing, like I say, about 70% uh, in the lower ranks where they don't defend the backboards. Will there be a 1v1 seminar? Um, probably not. I mean, we do within the pacifist system. Great question. Obviously, the pacifist system is launching the next one. Let me get my thing. We're launching it on Saturday, the 24th of February is the next pacifist cohort Saturday. And it's going to be Saturday and Sunday again uh, by popular demand with that one. And in the system, we have, I think on week four, Precepts does a three hour 1v1 masterclass and uh, explains all the stuff like that. So yeah, we, we probably won't do necessarily a ones seminar because it's just built into the system and stuff like that. Perfect. Awesome. Uh, brilliant. Thank you very much, guys. Do appreciate it. I uh, hope that's been useful. Again, keep it simple. Really do keep it simple. You'll be surprised how easy the game is. Just put the ball high and attack hard on counters. That's my biggest uh, tip for you. That's my biggest piece of advice without going too in-depth. That should be enough. That really is all the skills you need for, you know, Grand Champ and stuff like that, in all fairness. But, uh, yeah, fantastic. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming. I really do appreciate the support uh, in the past year. It's been absolutely unbelievable. And uh, yeah, really do appreciate it. As always, you know, I'm open for constructive criticism. If anyone's got any ideas, anything they want to see on a video, do let me know. Um, but I will bid you farewell. Have a great rest of your weekend and uh, speak soon.